hello in this session we look at problem solving with flowcharts so we'll discuss questions and also we'll discuss the answers as well so when you have a problem the flowchart is the graphical illustration of the problem so its flowchart is used to illustrate the problem so it has symbols and various kind of shapes so in our previous session we looked at there are several shapes for flowcharts so we are using the standard shapes in order to uh, model the problem so mainly it is used for communication for example in software engineering software teams there might be one person or the business analyst who looks at the requirement and prepare a flowchart and the flowchart is the one which is seen by the developer or the team to implement so this communication happens so for that we have to use standard shapes standard icons so the other person can understand as well so let's see step by step so first we'll write a flowchart algorithm and the flowchart to find the sum of two numbers so we start with the most simple problem finding the sum of two numbers so if you have the algorithm start if you have the steps algorithm is a status set of instructions algorithm can be defined as a set of instructions so we'll have the set of instructions start input the first number let's say a input the second number b the sum equals a plus b display sum and stop so if we have the flowchart which is in right we have the start symbol then you have the input symbol for input value a input value b there's another input symbol sum you have the processing sign again print sum that is the input output symbol and you have the stop so there's another way of doing it you can have this both inputs at the same time input a and b then you get the sum print and stop so if you move to the next example so algorithm and flowchart to convert temperature from celsius to fahrenheit so start input the temperature in celsius let's say c step 3 we have the calculation the equation step 4 display the temperature in fahrenheit step 5 stop so we convert it to the flowchart we have the symbols accordingly we have the stop at and stop symbols every flowchart should have start and stop and next we have the input symbol input value of c then you have the processing sign the rectangle then print f the input it to the output and then stop so this is the fahrenheit to celsius it's just the other way So next we have the algorithm and flowchart to find the area and perimeter of a square. So let's say L is side length of the square, area is the area of the square, perimeter is the perimeter of the square. So we have those symbols. So we ha first have the set of instructions. We have start. Then we have input side length of square by let's say L the area is l into l simple mathematics in order to find the area it is side length into side length if it's a square so that is l squared Perime perimeter is 4 into l so there are four sides in the square so one side is l so l plus l plus l plus l that is four l's and then you display area and the perimeter and next you stop so in the corresponding flowchart you have start symbol and the stop symbol so getting the input you have input value l the side length of the square l is side length of the square so 
that is the input output sign symbol for flowcharts next you have the processing symbol the rectangle so area and the perimeter is calculated next you print the area and the perimeter to the output so that is the flowchart to find the area and the perimeter of square So next one is calculating the area and the perimeter of a rectangle. So L is le length of the rectangle, B is the breadth of the rectangle. So if you look at the rectangle, you know that all sides are not equal. So you have L and B. So L is the length of the rectangle, B is the breadth of the rectangle. So area we have the variable that is the area of the rectangle and perimeter the perimeter of the rectangle. So if you have the set of instruction just like the previous example. So few modifications we have start. Next we have input side length and breadth. Let's say those values are L and B. So the area is L into B. Perimeter is you have four sides of the rectangle. Two sides are L. Two sides are B so that means L plus B into 2. Next you display the area and the perimeter and you have the stop sign. So with the corresponding flowchart you have the start and stop symbol at the beginning and the end. Next you have the flowchart symbol for input and output. So for input, input value L and B. Next you have two processing symbols. Area is L into B, perimeter is 2 into L plus B. So the rectangle shape is the processing symbol and then you print the area and the perimeter. So we discussed several examples. So far. So we can do it to the circle as well. So if you know the equation, then drawing draw the flowchart, it's very easy. So the equation is given. So next example is swapping two numbers using a temporary variable. So a variable, so when you have two numbers, let's say in one bottle you have uh, for example, let's say you have water and in another bottle you have uh, a Pepsi. So what you need to do is you have to have uh, in bottle A you have water, in bottle B you have Pepsi. So you have to mix those, you have to swap those. For that you need another bottle. Just like that here, you need to have another variable when you are trying to swap two variables. So we get the help of the third variable just like that for example in bottle A you have water full, bottle B you have Pepsi full, what you have to do is you have to swap these things so bottle A should have Pepsi, B should have water for that you should have another bottle for help in order to change so then you, if you have bottle A water you put let's say you have another bottle called C you put water from A to C then you A is empty so you can put B to A and swap it like that. So if you look at the examples, you have start, input two numbers, let's say number one, number two, display before swapping. So you just display the numbers before swapping. Then you have the temporary variable. You put number one to the temporary. Then after that the temp number one is empty so you put number two to number one then you put number 1 to number 2 so the variables are swapped so after swapping you display number 1 and number 2 so you have the corresponding flowchart with the start and end symbol for input output operations you have this symbol 
for processing operations you have the rectangle symbol so this is also really important finding the smallest number so this has selection as well in program sometimes you have to take a decision if this value is greater than this then the program goes in one path if the value is less than this the program goes in another path so this is called a selection the diagonal shape so to find if you have two sets of numbers to find the smallest so if you have the set of instructions first we have start next we have input two numbers let's say number one number two if number one is less than number two that means the smallest is number one else the smallest is number two so and end if stop let's say how we can demonstrate this from the flow chart so just like the start and end symbols it's same then input value that's also same that we have already discussed input value number one input value of number two next you have the decision making the diagonal shape if number one is less than number two if the condition is yes that means the smallest number is number one so you print smallest is number one if the decision is incorrect or false it goes to the no side that means smallest is number two so then and finally it comes to the stop so this is the example for decision making with the selection previously it was sequence and now we have an example for selection so that we have the diagonal symbol so which is the decision making So we discussed several examples here. That's the end of this session. So if you enjoyed this session, please subscribe and support the YouTube channel as well. Thank you.